This is Tiffany Grant, and you're listening to Geek Era. Stupid nerds ruin everything, right? Yeah. Give a little more than whatever you're looking for, so put away your smartphone. Check my mind. And I know every universe. Every time mine, every time that a character you're thinking of from Star Wars, every show to space, every Jedi, every Sith man. I'm that guy. And I beat battle toads. Yes, I'm a dungeon master. Stay through the credits and adventures, every home that I'm watching, don't you know? Cause there's something after. I'll cure, I'll spoil it for ya. Cause it wasn't even really that great, so don't bother wasting your time here. Let me recommend you something better anyway. I wrote petitions for every show that I'm missing, and my game is score is dope. I get every item. Every mission, who's that they're casting in it? What's that they're doing, man? I gotta sign on, gotta get on a message board, give you my opinion, cause my childhood's ruined. How's it going? This is uh, Sean Alpha, and we're here for another Geek Era uh, interview special. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Gord Bestwick. Uh, my name is Leon Potter. I'm Carrie Klein. And these guys are here representing. Uh, a film that we're just after doing a review with on on the, the website, uh, the Game Companion. So guys, tell us something a little bit about the film. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, well, Game Companion follows the story of uh, the 30-something loser Bob and his friend Cecil, who pretty much sit around doing nothing but playing video games. And when Bob becomes master at a video game... Uh, he levels up, he chooses a game companion, which he thinks is going to follow him around in the video game, and, uh, well, much to his surprise, his game companion pops out into the real world, and, well, comedy ensues and things don't, doesn't quite turn out the way he thinks it's going to turn out. Yeah, so it's a, it's a short film, about 12 minutes in length, and, yeah, it's been very interesting so far. Yeah, uh, personally myself, I, re- I really enjoyed the film. I thought it, I, I think it's going to be, it's the, it's going to be the anime and video game version of, you know, Dead Gentleman production. Great. Type of work. <laughs> uh, do you guys, do you guys play a lot of video games yourself or? Well, um, now, uh, me, Bob or, or Gord, <laughs> Um, you know, years ago when I was in my 20s, I was, uh, you know, really big into Doom and Quake and, you know, things uh, right around that era. And uh, recently, I've just kind of got back into first-person shooters just a little bit. I've been recently playing a game called Dino Horde, which is, well, there's there's not a lot really to tell you about it. You run around and you shoot dinosaurs. That's, uh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Intelligent. <laughs> I'm not a huge gamer, but my kids are, so I sort of keep up with them. Um, I was a I was a World of Warcraft ad- addict for a long time. Oh, um, me too. And after about a year of not really being outside, uh, <laughs> I decided to <laughs> call it like calm down a little bit on that one. All right, what about you? Um, oh, and I play uh, Cecil, by the way. Um, I play a lot of console video games. I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft, but yeah, I I did it for years and years, and I didn't see the sun for a long time. <laughs> um, I also play like Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and all that too. So, yeah. yeah so, uh, what got you guys actually into acting in this project in the first place? Well, uh, myself, I had heard about this project. Um, kind of uh, from two people at the same time. The director, Brian, had contacted me through YouTube as he had seen my work on a different project called Sidekicks, the web series. And Leela, our uh, costumer, who mm-hmm. I knew outside of this, uh, Leela played the, the the screaming pixie that died immediately on screen, by the way. Um, yeah, I, I saw her on the street, and we talked for a few minutes, and she told me to come in for an audition, and, well, they ended up picking me for Bob. Yeah, that's basically how I got my uh, my start. In and for me, um, I was originally contacted to do the fight choreography. Um, and when... So we got to chatting with them, and then they asked, would you mind reading for a part? And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. 
Um, and then, and that's basically how that worked. So. I met the director um, at my place of work. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, yeah, he, he knew me as a cosplayer and had seen some of my work online. And he asked if I wouldn't mind helping out to provide or make costumes for a local geek film. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And I just kind of helped out doing costumes and interviews and whatever else they needed to hand with. Cool. Uh, so the next question is actually breaking up the whole sort of cosplay convention. How has it been the reaction of the convention with your work? Uh, could you just repeat that a bit? You're, you just kind of went all weird and funny on us here. Okay. Uh, speaking of cosplay conventions, uh, what was the reaction to, uh, for your work from the, you know, sort of the convention scene? Was there an overall? Well, uh, given the sheer number of, of uh, conventions and such that we've been to, I'd say we've had a, a, a fairly positive. Uh, yeah, it's been review. really positive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, you know, we haven't gone viral, and you know, we're not getting mobbed when I, uh, you know, when we go to a convention. Um, but I'd say so far the uh, the the feel in the community has been very positive, and we've had a lot of uh, a very good support so far on this and it's not for lack of wanting i mean we want to be mobbed we ask yeah. people to mob us yeah <laughs> yeah so far nobody's taking us up on it well you know we not even angry mob no i know you know i'll settle for an angry mob that'd be fine you know i hated your movie Arr, and then coming after me that'd be kind of amusing <laughs> you know you know there was, <laughs> there was that group of girl guides but i think they're just trying to flog their cookies honestly <laughs> <laughs> such a sick man <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a, it's been a very positive uh, positive experience, and um, from the uh, you know from the response that we've we've got so far, uh, it's uh, you know quite frankly a little surprising on on you know just how positive it's been, and uh, I, I definitely think that uh, I definitely think that we've touched something with our audience. Uh, I think the characters themselves have really resonated with a lot of the people that you see at cosplay conventions and in the gamer world in general. Because, uh, mm. I mean, let's be honest, how many 30-something video game playing losers are out there? And the answer to that is... Apparently a lot more than you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, because no one wants to admit the actual numbers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, you know... Uh, so you've been traveling into a lot of conventions at the moment. Do you guys have any interesting stories of conventions from your side of the world? Um, for me, uh, not so much. Uh, the film has been traveling to the conventions. I'm afraid I'm way too broke to go and travel to all these conventions. However, we can ask our resident um, convention goer here, Carrie. This is where you kick in. Yeah. Oh, this is me. Yeah, Sorry. you get to speak now. We'll shut up. <laughs> Well, I don't get to go to nearly as many conventions as I would like to. Like, oh, there's so many out there. But um, I've been to maybe six or so that have actually been screening Game Companion and that we've actually been able to go there and host it along with Julie, who played Kimiko. Um, I can't really say we've had any, like, really interesting stories, but, um, I mean, the turnout and the reception was always positive and good. Um, people seem to enjoy it and... They're always asking, you know, when the next part is coming out. But <laughs> so far, that's that's the no go. But well, you, you know what it is, Carrie, <laughs> is that um, the reason why uh, you know Julie isn't getting flogged is is all of the all of the convention goers that you know are really uh, you know hot and heavy for Julie are so socially <laughs> awkward. Able to go up and actually talk to her. That, that, that's the problem. That's you see, if I was able to go, or, or uh, Leon was able to go, you know. Yeah, we're very approachable. Oh yeah. <laughs> people, people would be coming up and there's, going. There's uh, literally nothing intimidating about us at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, they'd come up and say, "You know what? I had a dream about you, and now I'm in counseling. I yeah. hate you." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> At least they remember you. Let's hope. 
I think I'm a I'm a little hard to miss, to be quite frank. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I'm obvious enough. You could use me as a traffic reflector during construction. So. <laughs> Uh, so, what are you guys are actually working on at the moment? You just after finishing up the, the game companion, anyway. You guys working on any uh, future projects? Well, we just finished. We just wrapped up Mining Moon with the same producer. Yeah. Yep. So, which is another one that's co- so keep an eye out for that one. That's another one that's going to be co- coming around the circuit. Yeah. Uh, at the current uh, production rate, uh, we're expecting Mining Moon to show up uh, show up out there. Uh, late January, mid February of next year is when post should be done and should be released. Uh, I think we're aiming to have that one released at Goticon. Goticon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, now. Mining Moon is a uh, is a sci- excuse me a sci fi flick. Uh, kind of takes place in a different set of planets. Um, I don't know how much we can really give away without giving it away quite yet. <laughs> it's a uh, uh, Mining Moon is something we'll 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 say that it exists. We'll say that it has a great. Uh, I will say to keep an eye out for it. I uh, keep an eye out <laughs> for it. Um, see, aside from that, what are you guys working on? Well, um, there has been discussion of a game companion to. We'll uh, we're we're going to say that that there's been discussion about continuing the game companion world. Um. And yeah, right now we've just basically been doing a lot of press for uh, Game Companion. That's, I hate to say it about it. Isn't that terribly disappointing? And I'm still working in theater. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so. working on costumes for next year. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, cool. Uh, so, where would, if, uh, you know, pe- for people that actually want to see it, uh, the Game Companion, that aren't, you know, that are, you know, abroad type of thing and can't get to a convention, where would you be able to find it? Uh, currently, we're um, only showing at conventions for the time being. Um, mm-hmm. Right around, uh, we're planning early, mid, well, probably about early uh, first quarter next year. Um, Game Companion will most likely be released to YouTube or some mm-hmm. kind of distribution channel therein. Uh, that's what discussion has been so far. Um, Right now, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid I don't have any more specifics on when it's going to be released to the general public. Uh, yeah, you you can find the trailer on on um, on the internet. I believe it's game uh, trailer. The trailer is on YouTube. Yeah, and we're hoping we're going to be able to post uh, our upcoming screenings for that on YouTube, also in the description section. I believe. Um, there's a Facebook page with usually yeah, there's which a, has got usually some information on the different conventions that are that is being shown at. Yeah, usually. you can uh, yeah find us on on Facebook. Uh, just look up Game Companion Film, and we do have an Earl on this, of which I'm going to find out and continue a little later in this conversation. All right. Cool. Uh, so. Tell Peter, you know, you're tell, telling our audience to contact the nearest convention to show the film. Uh, yeah, <laughs> basically, basically, I think the idea is to keep because because the demand inside of conventions is still fairly high. They want to keep it going in, just in the conventions for now before posting it on online. And there's also a lot of film festivals that won't actually take submissions that are open publicly. They'd rather just keep that as available for film festivals so ah. okay well th- thanks guys for having a talk with us here on the podcast great no and we're definitely telling our audience you know to spread the word to you know watch out for things cool so this is uh sean alpha signing off all right thanks uh cheers guys